stay in the business too. Maybe we can sure. tie that in. Sure. Yeah. Do you want me and, to lead with the twilight? Yeah. Let's talk about that because I really want to talk about rejection. Sure. Okay. Because uh, I think for for every filmmaker, I mean, most people get bummed out and they stop. You know, and they go home, and they live lives of sadness and bitterness, and you know, and, and they, then they have kids, and they take it on their kids, and their kids grow up to be sad, bitter people, and you know, it's generations. You know, it's like you know. So I mean, it's important to remember that Hitler was a frustrated artist. You know, he couldn't get people to buy his paintings, so he ended up, you know, becoming this dictator. We don't want that. We don't want any of your people, who, anyone who sees this, to do that. So. I digress. So, no, but I thought but, it was interesting because you, you simulate, it's almost like a bipolar ride. It is. It well, like yes, it. it's, you know, but again, it's like, what are you doing it for and what do you need and what's, what are you in it for? Oh. You know, I mean, we all have to be applauded and we all have to win and succeed. It's, it's very, it's very hard to lose, you know, but let's talk, let's, let's talk okay. about rejection. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave yeah. it to the twilight. Okay, okay great. sure, go for it. Okay. Ed. We understand that the Twilight Zone Companion was rejected, what, 25 times? Yes, over a two-year period. It was rejected It was re rejected 25 times over a two-year period, and that's where it's very important to have something called a wife. <laughs> because Elaine said to me, um, just keep going, just keep going. And, but also, when something's not working, you have to analyze why it's not working and fix that. Because until you f really figure it out, you can't change it. And so what was going on at that point was my book agent was Rod Serling's book agent. She had been Rod Serling's book agent. So a millionaire agent, she represented Peter Benchley, who was doing Jaws at that time. And so, from, so, so she would submit the book, and the publisher would say, would say, well, we like this, but we don't know how to sell it. We don't know if there's a market for it. And she wouldn't be convincing them. She wouldn't be selling them on it. And, and also, it would be submitted to an older editor, or an editor who wanted to buy it, but then would have to go to an older publisher, who hadn't grown up with the Twilight Zone, who wasn't a fan of the show, and who didn't understand why anyone would read a book about a show that was already off the network, you know, that had been off the network for over a decade. So, so I fired, I fired her. She was amazed that a little pips, pipsqueak like me would fire her, but I did. And I got another agent, and it was an agent who was coming, who had been an, a book editor, but she was starting as an agent, she was hungry, and she was young, and aggressive. And she went back to one of the publishers that had rejected it, Bantam. She went to a different editor, a guy named Erwin Applebaum, who was a young, uh, um, you know, amazing guy, just starting out. But he had the power to buy books. He didn't have to go to anyone from, for permission. He'd grown up with the Twilight Zone and he loved it, so he bought the book. So the 26th submission, it sold. And it was an instant bestseller, and it's been in print ever since. So, but, but rejection is very hard, which is why you need to surround yourself with people who are supportive of you, who will allow you your dream, you must also make sure that your work is solid if the, the films have to be good. Most, most writing is not very good. Most films are not very good. And you have to look at that with a very hard and discerning eye. And, and if you watch it and you say, well, wait a minute, these actors aren't very good, so maybe I need, as a director, to learn how to work with actors, and maybe I need to go to better actors. Maybe I need to... Well, Guillermo tells a great story, because it all boils down to how committed you are to your work. And Guillermo, when he was doing Kronos, first of all, his, his writing teacher said to him, if a road is not presented, you build one. And Guillermo in, in Mexico, there was no infrastructure to do the kind of movies he wanted to make. So he spent 10 years building a makeup effects and special effects company as a vendor to others so he could make his first film, Kronos. And then when he was, shoot, when he was shooting Kronos, there was one shot he wanted, which was the inside of this device with all these gears and this little weird creature in the center of that device. And he planned to build it where it was about this big and there'd be a little miniature camera that would, on a little, little cable that would go and move around in this little thing. And his producer said, we do not have the money to make that shot. You're going to have to lose that shot. And Guillermo really wanted that shot. So what he did was he sold his van. And he didn't have the money to do that shot. But what he did have the money to was there was a junkyard and it had these enormous gears from some factory that were the size of a room. And he bought those gears and he painted them gold. And he made this big creature that was like the size of a Volkswagen. And he put it in the middle of those gears and then he actually had the, a full-size camera move between those things. So if you ever see that shot, it's supposed to be this big and it was actually the size of a room. But that was Guillermo willing to sell his van to get that shot. So the question with anything you're doing is, how committed are you to what you're doing? And you, you have to be very committed. And uh, because you might be rejected 25 times, but it might be the 26th that magic will happen and doors will open and a career, a career will be made. And, uh, but you also have to be willing to have that happen again and again and again. And, and, it, and, and anytime you say it shouldn't be this way, what you have to say instead is, it is this way, what am I going to do about it? And that's how it works. Do you think it's harder to break into the business or maintain the business? 
In terms of breaking into the business, I view myself as a burglar working a neighborhood where I have to keep breaking in and breaking in and breaking in. <laughs> so it's not one at a, it's not just once. And it's not like all of a sudden you're you're through the golden door and and, and you know you're they, they're serving you pate. It's um, basically it's you know it's like it's coming up with things, staying fresh, finding the things that excite you, being open to the world, learning new things, uh, telling new stories, not just going over the same material over and over again, recognizing what you love. I mean, Ray, Ray Bradbury was very good with that. He, everything he loved, he kept. He kept. When he was a kid, he was collecting the Buck Rogers newspaper strips, this comic strip, and some kids ridiculed him and he threw out his collection. And he realized he made a terrible mistake. And he spent years building that collection back up. And uh, it was funny because as an adult, he was once speaking somewhere like in Big Bear, and someone said to him, "I have, I collect those two, and I can give them to you if you'd like them." And he and he got them, and uh, and so from him, I learned to to honor what you love and and come from that place uh, and really recognize your own unique qualities because uh, that's what makes you an individual as an artist. So, um, but but again, it's you know you're going to get knocked back and your, your biggest dreams are going to fall to, to disaster and you know there's going to be moments where you're just wandering you know as if you've been you know sucker punched and uh, you know and that's again where you must have people who, are, who know what, what they're doing and you call them you say okay I'm lost here what do I do how do I do this and uh, you know because you don't go to the people who hire you to, and you don't say that to the people who hired you you say it to the friends you've gathered over the years who know what they're doing and that's where it's so important to have mentors and, and, and often it can be a two way street so for instance someone might be mentoring me, but there'll be an area that I know how to do that they don't, where I'll say, okay, here's how this works. And so it's, it's very much a two-way street.